Hi, it's Andy Weinberg with Miller Welders. So I have a little extra time on my hands this week and actually got some of my honeydew list done. So now I'm out in the garage and I'm gonna have some fun working on my 69 Trans Am project. However, I quickly learned something about myself that irritates me. And that is when I pull the welding machine closer to my project, I usually start stacking tools on top of the welding machine. And I know I shouldn't do that because eventually it's going to start scratching the top of the machine and pretty soon it's going to look like crap. So I think I'm going to detour off of the Trans Am project for now and I'm going to make myself a tray that sits on top of the welding machine so that I can put my tools on there and also protect the top of the welder from getting scratched. I'm going to make that tray out of 18 and maybe 20 gauge steel because I have some of that laying around the shop. I'm gonna make my tray about an inch and a half, maybe two inches wider, and also an inch and a half to two inches longer than the top of the machine. That gives me a little extra room for my tools. I'm also gonna put a little lip on the side of that tray, and I'm gonna cut some slots in there so that I can hang some of my angle grinders or air tools off of it. So I decided on a piece of 18 gauge steel for this project because I had some of it laying around. But if you don't have steel for your projects, don't worry about it because there are online companies that you can order from and they'll ship it right to your door. Okay, I've already trimmed the 17 and a quarter inch dimension off my sheet. Now I'm gonna do the 27 inch cut. I'm gonna save this drop off piece to make the braces for underneath the tray. And uh, if you don't have a stomp shear, this material will still easily cut with a with an air shear or even tin snips if you're doing it manually. So now I'm going to mark my corners that I need to notch out so that I can bend these lips up. So because I have an inch and a quarter inch extra lip on the right side, I'm going to have to make this cut at two and three quarters by an inch and a half. And the other side, I need to do the same thing. On this side, because this is just gonna be a straight cut, it's gonna be an inch and a half by an inch and a half. Cutting the corners out on this project, I'm gonna be using a throatless shear. Uh, a throatless shear, also commonly called a Beverly shear, is excellent for this kind of work. Uh, if you don't have something like that, you can easily cut this with a good quality hand tin snips. This isn't, uh, this isn't too thick that you can get this cut with one of these, or even an electric shear. Let's get to cutting these corners out. After you cut the notches on your corners, you're gonna notice that it twists the metal a little bit and it kind of bends it. So you're gonna have to straighten that out with a hammer. Uh, I use a dead blow hammer and it does a real good job of taking that twist out. Now that we've got our notches cut in here, I'm going to get ready to drill or punch the holes for the tools that are gonna to hang off the side of the tray. So I'm gonna hang some of these angle grinders off the side of the tray and the measurement has to be wide enough to slide the tool in, which that's about three, one, two, so that's roughly five sixteenths. So I'm gonna drill that hole a little bit bigger than that and that way it'll set right on that edge inside that tray. I'm also gonna mount a few Sharpie markers because I use quite a bit of these when I'm working on my projects and ultimately I can't find on, I lay it someplace and can't find it. So I'm gonna drill about three holes for these and I'm also gonna drill a larger hole so that I can mount my whelper in there too. That way I won't misplace this. So those are kind of the primary tools that I'm gonna be mounting on this tray. Let's start punching and cutting some slots. Okay. 
For this project, I'm going to be bending the long sides first. I'm actually going to do this double bend first because if I don't do this first, I'm going to get stuck later on and I won't be able to make that second bend very easily. So I'm going to bend this one at a 90. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to bend the other side at a 90 also. I'm going to do this other long run. Then I'm going to bend my two ends to close up the pan. So. If you don't have a box pan brake like this, you can easily use a set of hand seamers or a hand brake, or even a set of locking pliers to do the same job. You could also use a bench vise, but if you use a bench vise, make sure you put a set of smooth jaws in the vise so you don't scar the metal as you're bending it. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these slots in. Uh, I'm also gonna bend a little bit of re uh, a lip on this edge, and I'm gonna call that like a retainer lip just to keep the tools in place. Okay, so now that I've cut my braces, I punched or drilled weld holes in them and bent them at a 90 degree. I'm going to spot weld these onto the bottom of the tray. They're going to butt up against the front and rear handles of the welding machine. Also, there's a center handle on the welding machine and I made a bracket for that as well. And that's going to be plug welded in the center of the tray and it's going to slide underneath the handle so that it will lock that tray into place and make it much more stable when moving it around. I'm going to be welding my tray together using the Multimatic 220 ACDC. I'm using Hobart ER70S6 wire in the 023 or 024 size. Also, I have my machine set for 20 gauge using the AutoSet Elite on the Multimatic. I'm using 20 gauge instead of the 18 gauge setting, which is what I'm actually welding, because when you plug weld, you're spending a little extra time welding these holes up in the same spot. So you don't want to burn through the material or possibly dimple the back side. So I use the little lower setting to el eliminate the chance of burning through. This is an example of an 18 gauge setting where you can see the material is starting to dimple a little bit whereas the 20 gauge setting is much smoother. Remember, read and follow all labels and the owner's manual. So I finished welding my tray together. And all in all, I think it turned out pretty good. I got room for my air tools on the side, my pens, my welper. The tray is extremely sturdy, plenty of room for additional tools, and I added one additional option. I put a bolt catch on the bottom so that when I open the access door, it holds it up. That way I can use both hands to change the wire if I need to. Pretty cool, huh? So I think it needs one more thing though. I think I'm going to shoot it with some Miller Blue Paint. Now we are done with the tray project. For more information on the Multimatic 220 ACDC or for projects that you can do in your garage, check out MillerWelds.com.